Hey everybody, it's Ron from Pick Dogs. This is Ron's Rundown. We're going to go over the MLB game scheduled for Wednesday, May 8th, 2024. And if you like what you see, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to put your baseball picks in the comments section below. And if you're looking for my best bets, including my daily rundown best bet in the MLB, you can find those at the premium picks tab at pickdogs.com. There's also a link in the description. Alrighty, here we go. Here are the games for Wednesday, Major League Baseball. First up, we see the Los Angeles Angels taking on the Pittsburgh Pirates. Jose Soriano and Martin Perez are your starters. I like both starting pitchers in this matchup, but I especially like Jose Soriano here as he's pitched really well on the road. 20 innings of work away from Angel Stadium. He's only given up one earned run. It's a .45 ERA, including that last game against the Guardians. Six innings, a shutout ball, kept the ball on the ground, and it was a 6-0 Angels win in the end. You know, the Pirates have one of the highest ground ball percentages offensively in baseball, so that plays really well into what Soriano's looking to do. And you know, the Pirates just in general have struggled against right handed pitching in the last you know few weeks or so. They've been some of the worst numbers in OPS, isolated power, you name it. The Pirates have struggled there against righties. And while the Angels have not been great against lefties, I still think they find a few runs on Martin Perez and the Pirates bullpen in the end to you know, make this definitely a worth a play uh, on the Angels money line. So I'm going to lean towards the under here and also take the Angels on the money line. Next up, we go to Philadelphia as the Blue Jays take on the Phillies. Chris Bassett and Aaron Nola are your starters. Yeah, it's really tough to back the Blue Jays in a game like this with Bassett struggling as much as he has. You know, 5.45 ERA, 6-1-4 on the road with an 0-3 record. We know last year he struggled quite a bit away from Rogers Center. You know, even his last game, which was a quality start in the end, it was still a loss for the Blue Jays 6-1 because oftentimes we're seeing Bassett paired up against the opposition's, you know, number one or number two starter, like we see here in Aaron Nola, who's pitched really well this season, 3.32 ERA. He hasn't been amazing at home, but I still think he's a much better option in this game. He has won a ton of games now for Philadelphia after a really, you know, bad start to the regular season against the Braves. He is yet to, the Phillies have won every single game since that one, uh, 6-0. So I'm, I'm going to go with the Phillies in this one and take the money line and lay the one and a half runs on the run line. Next up, we see the Detroit Tigers taking on the Cleveland Guardians. Reese Olsen and Tanner Bybee are your starters. You know, Bybee really struggled in that last game against the Angels, which, you know, that's not a great lineup, especially without Trout. So that's a big concern for me. It was five innings of eight hit, six run baseball, two home runs to go with it. He was struggling to really put away hitters in that game. A lot of long at bats, including the first at bat of the game, I think it was a 10 pitch at bat. So, uh, you know, I, I think that. While the Tigers aren't a great lineup themselves, I still think they can get to Bybee, who's got, you know, the expected numbers aren't the strongest. Reese Olsen pitched well enough for the Tigers to get a win last game, but yet again, the, the bullpen blew it in the end, and that one and the offense didn't really back them up either too much. It was five innings of five strikeout baseball at Yankee Stadium. That should be good enough for a win, but yet again, Detroit loses that one. They've lost a majority of his starts, so I can understand not wanting to back Olsen and the Tigers in this game, but you know what? Olsen... Two earned runs or fewer in each of his last four starts. The Tigers' bullpen, while it's, you know, it has, what well, like I said, the Yankee game, they blew it. It's still been a decent bullpen option. So I'm willing to take the Tigers in this one. I think Olsen gets his first W of the season. We're getting an excellent price with the road team. Give me Detroit. Next up, we see the New York Mets taking on the St. Louis Cardinals. Jose Quintana and Sonny Gray are your starters. To me, this is just too much of a lopsided pitching matchup. I got to go with the St. Louis Cardinals here. Quintana last game, eight earned runs and 10 base hits against the Tampa Bay Rays. He has really struggled away from home. He's got that ERA above eight on the road this season. Now he pitched well against the Mets, or excuse me, the Cardinals back on uh, April 28th. But this game now on the road, I think St. Louis gets to him a lineup that I think is really due for a lot of positive regression against lefties because they have a very low strikeout rate and a very low BABIP. So I think they're going to have some better luck going forward. You know, Sonny Gray has been excellent this season for St. Louis' new team. Sub-1 ERA overall, sub-1 ERA at home this year. He pitched against the Mets six innings, one run, one earned run, excuse me, nine strikeouts. Now, that wasn't, you know, it wasn't his best start because the, the unearned runs, he gave up three of them, but it still was a win in the end for the Cardinals, and he has won a majority of his starts, and the Cardinals have won a majority of his games so far this year, and he's pitching deeper into ball games. That was the key last year of why, you know, oftentimes we faded Sonny Gray because the prices we were seeing just didn't back it up when he was only going five, maybe six innings. But we've seen him go six-plus innings in each of his last four starts. Exactly what you want to see. Give me the Cardinals in this game on the money line. Next up, we see the Milwaukee Brewers taking on the Kansas City Royals. Joe Ross and Brady Singer are your starters. 
Last year, Brady Singer was much better at Kauffman Stadium than on the road, and so far this year, that's the case as well. A 2.37 ERA at Kauffman Stadium in 30 and a third innings with 31 strikeouts. Coming off another really good outing, quality start against the Rangers, a tough lineup at home. Six innings, one run, no walks, no home runs, and eight strikeouts. I think he pitches pretty well. This is a tough matchup. The Brewers, you know, a solid lineup overall against righties, but I would say the beginning of the season, they were a lot better than they are in the last couple of weeks or so. Joe Ross, a little bit inconsistent. He's got great strikeout stuff. The control is always a concern. Does pile up the walks, you know, a few times in a few games. We've seen three, at least one home run in each of his last three starts, which is a concern facing a pretty powerful Kansas City lineup. To me, Singer is the better option to start this game. I think the Royals honestly have the better lineup against a right-handed pitcher. And while I do worry about the Royals' bullpen in terms of regression, I still think it's been okay enough now for them to get the job done in the end in this ballgame. So I'm going to go with the Kansas City Royals on the money line at Kauffman Stadium. Next up, we see the San Diego Padres taking on the Chicago Cubs. Dylan Cease and Hayden Wesneski are your starters. You know, this is a game, it's not my favorite game on the board. I'm looking at the under in this one right now, but it's important to look at the weather at Wrigley Field. That's why you don't see a lot of totals released the night before, because the wind in the windy city really dictates where the total is going to be. You could see two great starting pitchers, but if the wind is blowing out the dead center field at 15, 20 miles per hour, you're going to see a pretty steep total usually. So we'll, we'll see what the weather looks like. We'll see what the number is in this game. But right now, I'm leaning towards the under because I do like both starting pitchers. Dylan Cease in great form. He's only had one bad start this year. That was against the Phillies. It was five earned runs, but that was at Petco Park on the road. He's been really sharp. Even his game at Coors Field, seven innings of one-run ball with eight strikeouts. His last game was against Dimebacks on the road, six and two-thirds innings of one-run ball with eight strikeouts. He's doing a better job of keeping the ball on the ground and limiting sharp contact. And I think he pitches well here. Wesneski coming off his best start of the season, six and a third innings, eight strikeouts, shutout baseball against Milwaukee. He's been sharp to start the year, a .54 ERA, a .72 whip, earning strikeouts, no home runs given up. So give me the under in this Padres-Cubs game, but like I said, we'll take a better look at it in the, uh, in the morning. Next up, we see the Miami Marlins taking on the Los Angeles Dodgers. Ryan Weathers and Gavin Stone are your starters. To me, it's tough to go against the Dodgers with how well this offense has been recently against righties, against lefties, um, you know, even against Max Fried, where it wasn't an amazing day offensively for the Dodgers. They still found enough runs to win that game and cover the reverse run line in that one. They were actually the underdog in that game. Uh, you know, They found a home run. Shohei Otani is red hot right now. Weathers, he's been inconsistent. Last game was a quality start on paper, but still wasn't enough for a Marlins win. And, you know, Gavin Stone's improving after a rough start to the regular season. We mentioned his expected numbers were solid, so we expected some positive regression. And here we see in his last four games, two earned runs or fewer given up in all of those starts. And, you know, a couple of those were tough matchups like the last one against the Braves. So give me the Los Angeles Dodgers laying the one and a half runs. Next up, the Arizona Diamondbacks taking on the Cincinnati Reds. We're going to see Jordan Montgomery and Graham Ashcraft as the projected starters you know, Jordan Montgomery's ERA looks very steep on paper, but I do think it's a little bit misleading because it was really just one bad outing his last game against the Dodgers. And, you know, he struggled against L.A., six earned runs, two home runs. But what starting pitcher hasn't struggled against the Dodgers recently? They've just been so hot offensively. So I don't put too much weight into that game. I'd like to see him bounce back here. But, you know, before that Dodgers start, he went quality start against the Cardinals, quality start against the Giants. I think he'll be fine here, you know, especially with Cincinnati's struggles right now against left-handed pitching, where in the last two weeks, they're 29th in team OPS and dead last in isolated power against lefties with a 23% strikeout rate. So I think Montgomery pitches pretty well. Don't love the Diamondbacks bullpen. I think it'll be good enough. Ashcraft, I like his game. You know, we talk about his potential. He's been a lot better on the road, though. Like this season, he's 2-0 at home, but with an ERA above 8, 8.44. His last two starts combined 12 and a third innings of one earned run baseball, but both of those were on the road. The previous home start on April 20th against a not-so-great Angels lineup he goes five innings, five earned runs, and a home run with three walks to go with it. So I'm going to go with the Arizona Diamondbacks in this game on the money line. Next up, we see the Baltimore Orioles taking on the Washington Nationals. Kyle Bradish and Mitchell Parker are your starters. You know, I like what I'm seeing from Mitchell Parker this year, and I like the fact that the Nationals are one of the more profitable teams in baseball this season. But I do struggle to get behind the Nationals in this game because – I just don't love the matchup. You know, Mitchell Parker starting to regress a little bit when it comes to not really pitching deep in the ball. Gives last two starts, four innings and five and a third. He gave up the three earned runs and six base hits in the last game against the Rangers. A couple of walks to go with it. And now you have a really tough matchup against an Orioles team. It's hit lefties very well all season, especially the last couple of weeks where they're number one in isolated power, number two in team OPS. 
I think they get to Parker early in this one. And Bradish pitched really well in his season debut against the Yankees. Four and two-thirds innings, one run, five strikeouts. I think he pitches pretty well. The Nationals are struggling a little bit recently against right-handed pitching. So give me the Orioles in this game on the money line and run line on the road. Next up, we see the Chicago White Sox taking on the Tampa Bay Rays. Chris Flexen and Aaron Savale are the projected starters. Not my favorite game on the board. You know, to me, I'm just going to go with the White Sox because the price we're getting, I think, makes it worth a shot. Uh, but even though the Rays have been really solid at Tropicana Field and certainly playing better baseball right now, it's just tough to get behind Savale at this price with you know his struggles, five earned runs, six, and then seven earned runs in his last three games. The six earned runs came against the White Sox back on April 27th. Four and a third, eight base hits, the six runs, and a home run. So with Savale, you know, really just not in good form right now, it's tough to get behind him, like I said. But, you know, Chris Flexen's also actually been a lot sharper recently. It's last four games, two earned runs or fewer in all those ball games, And one of those was against the Tampa Bay Rays, five innings of shutout baseball in the victory, nine to four. He's been a solid on the road with a sub three ERA in 12 and two-thirds innings. So I'm going to take a shot here with Chicago, maybe just take him in the first five innings. The Rays have been able to rally in recent games. And, you know, actually, I think I just talked myself into a White Sox first five money line. Next up, we see the Houston Astros taking on the New York Yankees. Spencer Aragetti and Carlos Rodon are your starters. We've mentioned the, the regression concerns for Carlos Rodon basically all season, and we saw it in the last game against the Orioles. Six earned runs, seven total runs, and three bombs in that one, and a 7-2 Yankees loss. And the Yankees have now lost three of his last four starts. I worry about him again in this spot. You know, this is an Astros team that already faced him at the beginning of the season, the first, first, the second game of the year. It was, you know, Rodon pitched well in terms of four and a third innings, one earned run. But he had five base hits given up, three walks. He was only able to go four and a third because his pitch count got way up there early. And the Astros had plenty of opportunities to make him pay. He got out of the jams like we've seen him do a few times this year. But like we saw against Baltimore, that wasn't the case. And now the Astros, who have been a great lineup against lefties this year and in previous years, I think they get some revenge on Carlos Rodon in this one. And while he's been better at Yankee Stadium, I still worry about him quite a bit in this start. Spencer Aragetti's coming off his best start of the season. He had, you know, his big problems in the uh, Major League debut, giving up the seven runs. But his last game against Cleveland, a very good lineup. Five and two-thirds innings, two earned runs, and six strikeouts. It's not easy to strike out a guardian per inning uh, against a team. It's just such a low strikeout rate the last few years uh, in, in against right-handed pitching. So, to me, even though the Astros' bullpen has been, you know, dreadful this year, when you look at the expected numbers, they actually have the better XFIP in terms of their bullpen Going into Tuesday's games compared to New York, I expect a lot of regression for this Yankees bullpen going forward as well. I'm going to go with the Astros in this one, getting an excellent price with Houston. Next up, we see the Boston Red Sox taking on the Atlanta Braves. We're going to see Nick Pavetta making his return to the mound and Chris Sale going for Atlanta. Pavetta pitched a couple of games for the Red Sox in the beginning of the season. He was, you know, sharp, 11 innings combined, one earned run, 13 strikeouts. But now you're facing the Atlanta Braves. And at the time, you faced the Mariners, who were struggling quite a bit at the beginning of the year, and the A's, who also were not great offensively to start the season. And now you're facing a Braves lineup that's, you know, hasn't been as strong the last week or so, but we still know one of the best lineups in baseball against right into pitching. And with Chris Sale on the other side facing his former team, pitching really well in great form, and this Red Sox lineup having one of the highest strikeout rates in baseball against lefties. It's tough to have a lot of faith in Boston in this game. As pesky as they've been, as, you know, as strong as the team ERA has been, the bullpen, I just think Chris Sale, you know, in the last four starts, he's gone seven innings or more in three of those four. He's had six or more strikeouts in each of his last five games. His control's been much better. I got to go with the uh, Atlanta Braves in this one on the run line. Next up, the Seattle Mariners taking on the Minnesota Twins. We're going to see George Kirby and Chris Paddock as your starters. Now, Chris Paddock's been a lot better at target field than he's been on the road this year, but I still think George Kirby is the much better option in this game. And I think we see you know, a similar game to what we saw in the first one of the series, a close one that could go either way. But with Kirby on the mound, I'm willing to go with Seattle in this game. I think they find the W. Kirby's just been in excellent form. Two earned runs or fewer each of his last four starts. His last game, his strikeout numbers weren't there, but that was against Houston, who has one of the lowest strikeout rates in all of baseball. Minnesota knows a thing or two about striking out, even though recently they've you know lowered those numbers quite a bit. I still think that Kirby's able to miss some bats and get the W in the end. It's going to be a close one. It's going to be a low-scoring game, in my opinion, but I still like the Mariners to grab the W. Next up, we see the San Francisco Giants taking on the Colorado Rockies. Jordan Hicks and Peter Lambert are your starters. 
You know, Jordan Hicks doesn't have a lot of course field experience, but he's pitched there a few times, four innings of work and a 4.5 ERA, which isn't amazing. But his last two outings at course field were out of the bullpen last season on September 1st and September 3rd. It was an inning and two thirds combined of shutout baseball with a strikeout and two victories for his team. So, you know, I think Hicks pitches pretty well in this game. This is honestly, you know, his style of game, keeping the ball on the ground and limiting sharp contact does bode well at Coors Field because it's such a hitter friendly ballpark. You need to be able to get those pitch to contact outs. And I think Hicks can get those. You know, Peter Lambert, not my favorite option to back. And I don't love this Rockies bullpen either. So while the Giants have really struggled this year, especially on the road and offensively, I think this is a pretty good matchup for him, honestly. So I'm going to go with San Francisco and lay the one and a half runs on the run line. And that's it. Those are the games for Wednesday in baseball. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. And don't forget to put your baseball picks in the comments section below. Again, if you're looking for my best bets, you can find those at Pick Dogs Premium. As always, this is Ron Manelli. Good luck.